Beautiful hand-carved shepherd with a sheep on his shoulders. Because all the readings today talk about God shepherding his people. And on this Mother's Day, that's kind of very appropriate too. Because that's what moms do. They, they kind of shepherd us. They show us the way, don't they? I remember my mother over and over again trying to show me the right ways to do things and, and how to avoid the wrong ways of doing things. And I always had a propensity for those wrong ways. And one of her favorite sayings about me is, boy, you were in big trouble. <laughs> but I survived all that because of her gentle, persistent way of showing me the loving thing to do, the patient, correct, godly thing to do. And I never will forget my mother's doing that for me because that's what her calling was in her eyes. God was calling her as a mother to bring God's ways, God's love, God's wonderful presence to her children, to myself, my brother, and my sister. And she did a great job. And many times we think about our mothers, and hopefully that's what we can think about, the things that they did to show us the right way, to show us the presence of God, to show us God's presence in our lives at home as a family. And in doing that, they are serving God as just like any of the apostles, just like any of the saints. They're serving God as lead as a good shepherd, taking care of his, her flock. So we thank God for this wonderful image of the shepherd, but I'm gonna move it because it's so big. <laughs> Today's first reading, the Acts of the Apostles, you have to understand a couple of things. Perga is in Antioch, or near Antioch, and it is uh, a city of Gentile people with a Jewish settlement in it. So Paul and Barnabas begin with the Jewish people because that was what they did in the earliest days of the church. They didn't have churches, so they went to the synagogues and they proclaimed the good news of Jesus. And they used to have very small numbers, but when Paul and Barnabas come, all these other people come, and, and the synagogue is filled with people. And the regular Jewish worshipers, this is sound familiar, it's like us at Christmas and Easter. Where did all these people come from, you know? That's what's going on. There, there's this entirely too many people to hold in this little synagogue, but they're so interested in what Paul and Barnabas have to say about not just their Jewish faith, which they do talk about because that prepares us for Jesus. But they also talk about Jesus and he's the fulfillment of all that is said about God, from God in the Jewish prophets especially. Like for instance, the Lord has commanded us, I have made you a light to the Gentiles that you may be an instrument of salvation to the ends of the earth. That's from the Jewish scripture. God says that's going to happen. And Paul and Barnabas see themselves as the fulfillment of that prophecy that Jesus is the savior of all people. And if the Jewish people here are rejecting us or don't want us there in their presence, we'll go out to the Gentiles and we'll bring the good news of Jesus to everyone. And that's what happens. They are thrown out of the city, shown the gates, as they say, and uh, they shake the dust off their feet and protest against them but they're filled with joy and the Holy Spirit and they go on to the next town to bring the good news of Jesus. Nothing discourages them because they have the joy in the presence of the Holy Spirit. And that's what we need to do when we are at home as a family. We need to have the joy in the presence of the Holy Spirit even if we are finding it difficult and challenging to bring God's love and even our own human love to our children and sometimes it seems like they're rejecting us, but they just don't know exactly everything they need to know, right? So with persistence, with the joy and the grace of the Holy Spirit, we go about trying to do the best that we can. Today's second reading is from the book of Revelation, that last book of the Bible. Don't you always love that book? And again, this gives us a, a taste of where we're going. If we are persistent, if we do our best, if we love God and love our family in God's name, what does this all 
lead to. And it's the vision of heaven that it leads to. All this that is given to John as a foretaste for all of us. That's why he writes it down. He wants us to understand that in heaven is where Jesus, the Lamb of God, is gone. He's the center of all of this worship and praise of God. And the people get there because he leads them to the springs of life-giving water. We are these baptized people, children of God through baptism, fed by the Holy Communion of the Eucharist, that Jesus may live within us. And it all leads to that eternal joy of heaven, where God will wipe away the tear from all of our eyes. God's going to take care of us. Jesus promises that in the gospel. My sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me and I give them eternal life and they will never perish. But you know what? We're human, right? So here's a beautiful image Jesus gives us in today's gospel. God holding us in his hand. And there's no taking out of God's hand anything that God's got a hold on. Yet, you ever hold a whole bunch of bugs in your hand or something insects or something you know how they're trying to get out of your hand sometimes that's you and I you know we're in God's hand but it's like well, well maybe I want to do this or me and we're resistant and we're not exactly cooperating we're not exactly obedient we're being ourselves and God's got a handle on us and he's trying to hold us in his hand don't fight it let God hold you in the palm of his hand. There's no one greater than the Father, and the Father has you in his hand. Not just Jesus, but God the Father's got us in his hands. The Father and I are one, Jesus is saying. He's trying to tell us we have eternal life. Live in that life. Be at peace in the hand of God, and God will take you home to heaven. I think we all need to hear that message. We all need to realize how loving and strong and faithful God is to all of us. And he wants to take care of us. As a shepherd takes care of his sheep, as a mother takes care of her children, God wants to take care of us into eternity, into the eternal life of heaven. I don't know why, but we find people resisting this all the time. They simply don't have that grace of understanding, of great depth of God's love for each and every one of us. So I pray with you today on this Mother's Day weekend that we deepen our appreciation of who our mothers are to us, and most importantly, we deepen our appreciation of who God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the loving Trinity, how much they love us and how much they want to hold us in their hand and see us into the eternal joy of heaven. May that faith grow deeper and stronger in our lives every day of our lives. Amen.